Well, hello, Andy here, Sergeant Slick. Welcome to my studio in Melbourne, Australia. Going to do a quick run through today of my new single. It's alongside Alex Skewer and it is called Song 2. It is a cover of the Blur classic from uh, 1997, I believe it came out, which uh, makes that song 25 years old. I can't believe it's 25 years old. I actually remember playing that record when it first came out in DJ sets. So that's a bit scary. 25 years ago. <laughs> Anyway, it's back. We've done our own new version, and uh, this is what it sounds like. Anyway, we're going to go through the sounds one by one. Uh, I'm just going to show you how we put this thing together. Uh, Alex actually started this in um, Brazil and then came to me with the idea of a collaboration and I kind of jumped at it because I remember playing this record many times over the years, not only the original but bootlegs and things that came out later on and it always just got an amazing reaction and was kind of one of those peak time records. So I thought it was a really good one to do. Alex came with the vocal, which was great. He recorded the vocal himself and uh, did an amazing job and also came with some uh, instrumentation, guitars, some brassy stabs and things. We'll go through all those. But um, when I loaded up at my end, obviously I wanted to put my little stamp on it as well, being a collaboration. So started with the drums, obviously, and a nice uh, kick and clap. Here we go. Just something very simple and very solid just to provide the foundation, I guess, for a, a housey kind of new disco kind of groove that we're going for. Um, and then there's the little supporting loop under there just to fill it out a little bit more, give it a little bit more character. A couple of nice like live sounding claps that pretty much run through the whole clap, through the whole track. Um, and these are ones I use all the time. They're amazing. They're from the Oliver uh, Power Tools Pack, Volume 1. If you haven't heard that and you're into production, then you really need to go and check it out. Um, another clap loop under there. Just to give a little bit more swing to it. The double claps, there they are. I was waiting for those. Love the double claps. Down here we have some more hi-hats just to spice up the high end a little bit. Let's listen to those. There's one. There's two. And there's number three. My favorite, the 808 hi-hat. I use it in every record I do pretty much. It's got that beautiful high-end sheen. It's fizz. It just brings the high end alive. That's a beautiful sound. Tambourines, also love the tambourines, pan them out nice and wide, it just gives that width to your drum section and it just gives that little bit of shuffle as well underneath there. And congas as well, wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a slick jam if it didn't have those congas in there. And there they are. So there's the drums, let's move on to the actual sounds now, start with the bass. Let's listen to that in isolation. Nice and funky. And uh, it's funny actually, because whenever I post a, a video in the studio or a work in progress, I do I get a lot of comments and questions about my bass lines, how I'm doing it, what sound I'm using. So I'm gonna give it away here. It's just the Ableton Electric Bass Open preset, which is in your in your Ableton library. A little bit of processing, nothing too major, but to me, bass is more about the actual pattern than, than the sound you're using. Um, it's got to have funk and it's got to have movement and it's got to have swing. I always have the swing over here on about 16B or C. Um, and the notes as well. You can see I got all these little tiny little notes that might look insignificant, but when you play through, that's what gives it the funkiness. So... I'll remove them. 
Boring. Vanilla. <laughs> Get him back in. Straight away. Gets the shoulders going. Um, so, yeah. I mean, with bass, obviously, that's a kind of retro disco so sounding bass line. And I do like to look to the past to see classic bass lines, how they program them and what makes them sound so funky. And I usually have, will have a few reference tracks, say, underneath my bass line just to listen along and get some ideas about how to program it. So, Star Funk, Around the World, Alarm Breaks Running, Chic, Good Times, Queen, Another One Bites the Dust. And you can probably hear already that those bass lines have something in common and they all have the first three beats in each bar, duh, 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 which is so simple, but it just sets the tone, sets the scene, gets the bass locked into the groove. And then you've got the rest of the bar or a couple of bars, or however long it may be, to move around and play different notes, do the little slides, do the little scratches and picks that make a bass line sound really funky. So... Yeah, you got to look to the past and I and I do a lot just to uh just get that inspiration and use as a starting point to uh to build my bass lines. Absolutely. You got to do it. Uh let's add some guitars. Really nicely recorded from Alex as I said. Um made my job super easy delivering all these sounds um when we started the project. Move along to another section here. There's another guitar, just sitting there, whacka 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 underneath. Another guitar sound there. And then we've got all these little brassy stabs and stringy kind of sounds that Alex also sent over. Kind of just bounce off each other and then bounce off the bass line as well. And when the vocal comes in, they also bounce off that. Do the side chain back on the bass. Um, next up is just my little effects group, which is it's just pretty boring stuff. But at the end of the track, when I've got pretty much everything together, I'll just jump on and maybe five or six tracks of risers. Um, clap fills, things like that, reverb claps, lasers, just little character sounds to give the track its identity and uh, they're really good for transitions and moving into uh, from one section to another and, and that kind of thing as well. So, right, let's hear the vocal. <laughs> So as I said, Alex uh, came with the vocal uh, at the beginning of this whole process. So he'd uh, recorded it really nicely and I didn't have to do too much in that department. I just actually thought that the woohoo just didn't have enough impact. So I ended up just jumping on this mic right here and recording my own one to add to the mix. <laughs> So there's a bit of slick in the mix there on the vocals as well. And also a little trick that I like to use on uh, on vocals especially, but on any sound is really, really is these reverse reverbs. So I like when you've got a sound like this woohoo, which comes out kind of comes out of nowhere and is really in your face. I like to do like a little reverse reverb of that same line into the vocal. So what I've done there is I've basically isolated the woo thrown a massive reverb tail on it, bounce that, and then I've got this. This file, which is just the reverb reversed, and then it just collides in with the actual woohoo. Every time it plays, and it kind of just sucks you into the sound. That's the way I hear it anyway. <laughs> it's a good little production 
trick and it's something I learned probably like in the 90s or 2000s that I'm still using now. Anyway, I think I've uh, pretty much covered everything. Sergeant Slick, Alex Gua, song two is out now. I uh, hope you enjoyed my walkthrough today. If there's any questions about this project, uh, Ableton, plugins, producing music, anything, fire away in the comments. I'd be happy to answer and see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.